<laughs> it's been a very interesting week, hasn't it? The Bears are getting the better of the Bulls. Is it temporary or is it permanent? And uh, this week, by the way, welcome to the video on Justin Wait. This week I cover four possible ways to make money in a bear market, which I think is coming. M not right now. I mean, the market's had a sell-off. Not right now, but it, I think it is coming. Uh, also, one company bit of news. Uh, one company update. I reveal the result of my penny stock punt of the people. I just took a punt on a company that uh, people... People suggested, and I'll review that later. Uh, I look at the charts of companies that I think are interesting. There's a couple of companies at the moment that are charts are very interesting. Uh, the stock performance of the companies I cover in the videos, my portfolio performance. Uh, don't forget, subscribe below, hit the subscribe button, and the bell. Don't forget the bell. The bell is very important. You will not get notified if you don't hit the bell. But you won't see the bell. If you're looking for the bell, you can't see the bell. Where's the bell? Where's the bell? I can't see the bell. You won't see the bell until you hit the subscribe button. All right? So hit the subscribe then hit the bell. Don't forget, comment below, and uh, by all means, listen, watch this bit of video, show more. So if you go to my channel on YouTube here, and you'll see uh, home and videos, click videos, and you'll see all these videos here, but click any video, like the latest one there, and uh, let me just pause that for a second, and if you scroll down, all right, you'll see show more, okay, just below my face there, uh, show more expands this menu, and you can see here, some previous company videos, A to Z, agronomics. So you can see all these videos here, all these videos, all scroll down, and then other videos to watch. Ten lessons I've learned from investing in small caps, uh, how to set up a chart for technical analysis, my stock picking strategy, how I use relative strength, how I monitor share price momentum, what's a balance sheet, what's a TR1, what is MACD about me, and so that's all underneath that show me bit, right, which is just below my head there to expand the video. Okay, listen, it's been the worst week pretty much in equities so far this year, especially the U.S. equity market. And, they, and listen, when the, the U.S. equity market, of course, is the biggest market in the world, and they say when America sneezes, we all catch a cold. All right, so we've been following the American markets. Why have they been selling off? Essentially, uh, Trump has threatened to sort of uh, impose tariffs on $300 billion worth of additional imports, uh, Chinese imports, in September. If the U.S. and China don't, uh, you know, come up with a trade deal. And so China also has recently devalued its currency, made it weaker uh, in response to the thing. And uh, America's called them, uh, you know, currency manipulators. And China's come back saying, will it, that's illegal. We'll, imp you know, we'll impose uh, tariffs on your agricultural products. So the trade war is escalating. And uh, on top of this, the Fed has reduced their interest rate. And uh, the comments out of Jerome Powell weren't, didn't please a lot of people. Uh, other central banks are also reducing their interest rates on global growth worries. So, um, and not only that, if you look at what's called um, the yield curve in America, it's different between the sort of uh, three months to 10 year uh, treasury bills. Uh, it's inverted. Uh, it has inverted, and this has been an excellent you know, signal. Uh, I think uh, it's basically it's a difference between the yield on the three months treasury bills and the benchmark 10 year bond, which has turned negative uh, or inverted, as it's called. And this has happened before every US recession for the past. 50 years all right so it's a significant thing um so if we are heading towards a recession how do you make money if stocks are going down how do you make money and essentially here's four possible ways to make money in a bear market all right first and foremost and i'm so annoyed by this i am so annoyed months ago about four months ago when i was very bearish i had uh, a gold etf and i had a silver etf the price of gold was a lot lower. It was about 1300 bucks or 1200 bucks an ounce. Uh, now it's shot up. Look at gold. And uh, central banks are not only sort of devaluing their currencies or, or reducing their interest rates, uh, they are buying gold. For the first quarter, gold purchases by central banks led by Russia and China were the highest in six years as countries diversify their assets away from the US dollar. Um, look at that, $1,500 an ounce. Gold price is now at a six-year high. So if I was going to get into gold, uh, do you know what? I'm kicking myself. I spoke to Dan, uh, the CEO of Hummingbird Resources, a gold producer, and uh, I didn't buy any, 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 any stock in the company. I liked them a lot. I did a bit of research beforehand. Uh, I haven't bought a resource company for a long time. If I am going to buy one, it's going to be gold. I didn't buy them. And they shot it by 12% after the podcast. Other people saw the opportunity. It was staring me right in the eyes. I went to buy. I didn't buy. 
Uh, but gold has run too fast, too quickly at the moment. If you look at the RSI, it's way up there. I mean, look at the RSI there. It's around 80. It will come back a little bit, I fear. Um, only temporarily, I think. But it will come back. I, I'm not going to buy anything, uh, you know, with an RSI that high. It's got to come back. So what's your options here, gold? You can buy gold explorers, gold miners. I mean, of course, you may have uh, specific company issues. If you buy one company, it's high risk, of course. Uh, the way I'd be doing it probably is buy a gold ETF, which I did have, and I'll be looking into that. But at the moment, gold has gone too quickly. So one option out of four is gone, but I will be looking to do that. If, if gold weakens over the next few months and there's hope for a trade deal, I will still be buying gold as a hedge. All right. Gold is a safe haven when everything else is, is going to pot. People pile into gold. It's a safe asset. asset. It's a store of value. And in fact, as more people buy it, of course, there's a limited amount of supply. Uh, the price goes up. So it doesn't yield anything. Just capital, you know, raise there. So uh, capital appreciation there. Uh, secondly, bonds. Bonds are like the way government raise money. Uh, so you can loan the government money. That's a bond. It's a treasury yield, whatever. Um, but they give you a fixed rate, and they call it fixed rate. Uh, you know, but, but bonds have been rallying like crazy. And what happens is bonds are a bit like uh, a stock that pays a dividend. Okay, When the price goes up of a bond, the yield comes down. Now, the flight to safety has sent a 10-year treasury yield, and that's the benchmark. That's American treasury. It's one of the safest you know, bit of debts you can buy. I mean, the government debts all around the world. And depending how, how risky that government debt is, the, the better the yield. But um, as far as safe debt is concerned, the American is the safest because it's the biggest economy. But the 10-year treasury note fell to a low of 1.595. This is the benchmark, pretty much, 10-year. Uh, and that's the lowest it's been for over well, the close of three years. All right. And so you can see there, uh, this is how crazy it is. OK, 15 trillion of government bonds worldwide or 25 percent of the market now trade at negative yields. That's nearly triple where it was in October 2018. What does that mean? That means in Germany, the biggest economy in Europe is a negative yield. So essentially, people are loaning the government money and going to get back less than they loaned it. So let's say, for example, they loan the government, say, a, a dollar. In 10 years, they're happy to get back 96 cents or euros or whatever cents in the euro. Yeah. So and that's insane, isn't it? I mean, but why are they doing this? Because they believe uh, that the, the, the money they hold will devalue, the stock market will devalue. But they think, you know, I assume bonds will devalue less than everything else. So it's, it's, it's the lesser of all the evils. So I think that's insane. So 25 percent of, you know, of the government bonds around the world are yielding negative uh, you know, yields. That's just nuts. That's nuts. That's how it is. So at the moment, yeah, people are going for, you know, U.S. Treasuries, 1.5% uh, over 10 years. Is that good? I wouldn't be going for that. I, I may go for gold, but I wouldn't go for that. It's such a low, low yield. Um, another opportunity is um, Bitcoin. It's risen quite quickly in the last few months. It's from April, we've had four thousand one hundred dollars April first to eleven thousand or eleven and a half thousand a day. So that's a nice thing. But Bitcoin, like I say, many cryptocurrency experts and analysts will suggest that Bitcoin's rise in tandem with the fall in the yuan, as uh, as China sort of uh, you know devalued its currency pretty much, means it's becoming a safe haven asset despite its extreme volatility and knowing being able to accurately predict what Bitcoin will do next. So it's volatile, it's hard to access as well. One of the best things you can do, I think, or I think worth doing, is scaling in, and this is the fourth way, uh, scaling into dividend-paying stocks. They pay a lot higher. And like I said, when you have yields on government bonds going lower, the gold has already you know, done it, it's shooting up there, uh, where do people get a return? And I think dividend-paying yields and uh, you know, sort of, uh, stocks. So, you know, you get little or negative return for government bonds. Bitcoin is volatile and accessible. So, I wouldn't pick an individual company. Like I said, I'd go for an ETF, and I am in an ETF. Uh, and like I said, at the moment, this is tanking, but the yield is going up. So, I'm, I'm, down, I'm down about, I'm scaled in slowly. I'm down around a 6% on the capital side, on the share price side. But they pay a 7% dividend, 7.1% at the moment, a year on this iShares UK dividend. It's basically the 
350 of the biggest, or the FTSE 350, uh, are the biggest dividend paying stocks. All right. Now, if one of those stocks or a couple of stocks can't sustain that dividend, they're swapped out for another high paid stock. So the yield is quite sustainable. So uh, total expense ratio of this is 0.4%. That's what we get charged. Uh, distribution frequency is quarterly. So you get a dividend quit quarterly. And pretty much that dividend is, is split in four, but it's not equal parts. But uh, those parts make up around, around 7% at the moment. It's it's ISA eligible, uh, eligibility has, so you can buy it in your ISA. It's uh, IUKD is a ticker, I've covered it before. Again, look below, and at the moment, like I said, 7.1% of dividend yield, and they have 49 holdings. So pretty much, uh, like I said, it's an average, uh, they are weighted to more, uh, towards uh, Companies towards the top end more the higher payers, so 3.4 percent I think is the highest exposure they have. But if you look at that 50 stocks, for example, then you're talking about a two percent exposure on average across uh, the entire lot. So I think it's relatively safe, and I'll come to look at the chart later. But it, literally, it's just just dip below a, a you know a historic low here. It's a seven year low the share price, and it's oversold. So if you are thinking of you know getting involved in this. Do some research, first of all. Do your own due diligence. It's not investment advice, okay? But scale in. If you're happy with it, and I, I suggest buying this, you know, once a quarter when it hits oversold levels every now and again uh, on a regular basis. This is what's a retirement fund, essentially. So what you do is reinvest the dividends, and uh, then you get paid dividends on those dividends. So you earn, you know, money, buy more shares, and then next time, you get paid dividends on those dividends. So that's called compound interest. And uh, it's very powerful over the long term. So that's what I'm doing. I've got uh, half of my portfolios in this. Maybe too much? Maybe so. But I genuinely I think at the moment now, with that worry about the global growth and a lower yielding environment as far as bonds are concerned, then dividend paying stocks are you know, an option of earning good money and a good return. Uh, so check it out. IUKD is a ticker there. All right, do some research. Okay, I want to cover um, Polarian. I had Richard uh, Hullahan, uh, CEO, on the podcast yesterday, and he said a couple of things I didn't know before. Uh, and the, the, the BD of it, the eagle eye of you, there's been a bit of a sell-off going on today. It doesn't take a lot, a lot to move the stock, you know. But um, the 27 million market cap, and just. To let you know if you don't know what it is check out again below uh, i've done a video on this previously but uh, they are uh, basically imaging mri imaging uh, tech it, it's in addition to mri uh, mri scanners which are those massive things you see in hospitals so uh, they'll be used more by the hospital so they get more asset allocation or, or asset use i mean from those uh, from the, the bit of kit they've spent on and they're going through what's called a phase three clinical start uh, trial but the news out was uh, they've enrolled the first patient at their third hospital site a third site they've added a third site of course they did have two sites um, and uh, the, the, the university of cincinnati so uh, on the 11th of June, the company had a third trial site in addition to Duke University and University of Virginia to improve the enrollment rates for its phase three clinical trials. At the moment, enrollment for the clinical trials are now past 98% in lung transplant pathway and 75% in lung lobe resection pathway. That's where someone's uh, a lobe has been removed. And so, so they need a total of 80 patients targeted for enrollment. That's it. Normally, for drug clinical trials, you're talking several hundred, 600, something like that, 400, right? It's high risk. Uh, but the company remains on target to complete enrollment for clinical trials before the end of Q3. We're in Q3 right now, so before the end of Q3, they're quite pleased that they'll have uh, they're, you know, they're, uh, satisfied the enrollment criteria, and readout will be not long after that, four to six weeks after that. Now, it's very low risk. Why is it low risk? Because all it is is their machine up against a 40-year-old other machine that's in standard use at the moment. This 40-year-old machine, it, it basically gives off two-dimensional, low-resolution uh, images, and it's also radioactive, so it's harmful to humans. Now, Polarian's tech gives off 3D high resolution images okay it's also not harmful to humans it uh, by the way it's, it, it it amplifies mri scans by 100,000 times so that's that powerful um so why again why is it low risk 
low patience. Uh, it's just not inferiority against that 40 year old tech. Plus, the problem with humans and putting most, it's a drug device because there's xenon gas that goes in, into this device, right? But they are testing machine against machine. It's not the drug on the humans being tested or the human reaction to the drug. Like I said, you can, you, know, you can use one drug, the same drug, on two different humans and have different reactions. That's the problem with phase three trials. With this, it's not a problem there. They're just going against, they're, they're, they're testing their machine against a different machine, not how the human reacts. Do you understand? So that's why it's very low risk. And also, what Richard revealed on the podcast this week, I didn't know this, they did their own sort of trial a while back. Um, and it passed as far as, you know, it did very well. So they, they, they're quite pleased. They can prove non-inferiority. That means they can do as good or better than a 40-year-old tech. All right? So it's not worse, basically. Uh, Richard said, by the way, the first patient enrollment at our additional trial site at UC provides a reinforcement that we will deliver on our commitment to the timely completion of enrollment for clinical trials. We remain focused on the completion of our new drug application and submission to the US FDA following the readout of clinical trials. We, we are funded to complete this and undertake post-submission launch preparation and planning. I look forward to providing our shareholders with further updates regarding clinical trials as they near completion. Three points here I want, to, I want to bring out, okay? Clinical trials will be finished this quarter and readout will be within six weeks of that. Four to six weeks. They've done their own mini clinical trial and it passed, non-inferiority. Huh? This is very low risk. They have to prove non-inferiority against 40 uh, you know, year old tech. There's 2D low resolution and it's harmful to the human. The company is so confident they are working on the NDA, new drug application, for submission to the FDA already and Richard bought 80 grand worth of shares in the placing a few weeks back. So, I can see where this is going. And like I said, if you want to see the market potential of this company, check out the video below, and, uh, and, and it shows the market size and all that. But it's very compelling. It's not just selling their tech, it's also just selling the xenon. Every time um, a patient has to, you know, basically breathes in the xenon gas, holds it for 8 to 10 seconds in the MRI scanner, and it amplifies their lungs like never before. Lungs are very inaccessible, not only for operations-wise, but, you know, for get, gaining sort of images of them. Their tech amplifies that by 100,000 times. Um, so check it out. I, really, I, I think you should add them to your watch list. I think it's a, a massive milestone coming up, and I, I think it'll fly. As soon as that comes out, there's it, it, positive news. I think it'll fly. The shape I will fly. Uh, okay, next thing I want to talk about is um, safe stay. 22 million, all right? This is now six million below its net asset value. Uh, Hervé or Hervé Delini, uh, Delini uh, was on Vox Markets this week with uh, Abraham on video, and he was talking about the opportunity that lies ahead. And he was saying uh, only three percent of the hostel market is branded, forty percent of the hotel market is branded. But before, I mean, pre, pre, pre in, the, in the before the nineties. Um, you know, low-cost hotels were the same, very fragmented, lots of operators, okay, not giving a sort of branded you know, proposition, uh, or a decent proposition. He said that's the same with the hostel market at the moment. And what they intend to do is, you know, basically bring together that and uh, merge that and buy up lots of hostels and then brand them under the safe state model, which is very compelling. Check out the website, very smart hostels, and... Uh, Massively affordable. And it's not only really about Safe State, it's an amazing brand. If you go on their Instagram page, it's like a community of people that love Safe State. And they, they go out for drinks together and all this stuff. So it's worth looking at. And just to go over it, and Nuno came on the podcast a while back. They got 10 million, they raised 10 million. This is when he came on. Uh, they, they've got 14 hostels at the moment. Is it 15 or 14? Uh, they will get to 20. Confident getting to 20. And I had uh, I just emailed Nuno actually. So he's still confident about that by summer next year. So they were confident to get the 20 by this time next year. And it's pretty much, every hostel uh, adds pretty much a million pound a top line. All right. Uh, so he said they, they then will have, uh, will get to 40 quite easily because they said they'll have money, they'll be profitable this year and they'll be paying, they'll have to go to the market to raise money, which takes a long time and uh, drag the share price, of course. But they have money to buy more hostels. So the, the growth of 40 will be even quicker. Uh, just look, net asset values there. So at the bottom there, 27 million. Uh, current assets are 70 million. 
uh, liabilities, uh, sorry, current assets 11 million, but total assets 70 million, uh, total liabilities 42, 27.9 of 28 million is net asset value. Uh, so three reasons I like safe stay. It's currently valuable in net assets, generating revenue, which is growing, and they are profitable this year. Plus, they have cash and will not need to raise money. Number two, they have 14 hostels now, clear path to 20 by this time next year, and a target of 40 in the next few years. And the board, Larry Lippman, a successful serial entrepreneur who reckons the hostel market presents a huge opportunity. He's the guy behind Safe Store. Uh, and lots of other businesses. I've covered them previously. They have skinned the game and uh, a clear path forward. Okay, I sent out this tweet in the week. Uh, I was a bit bored. The market was going sideways or downwards, downwards pretty much. And I sent out this tweet just for fun. I'm starting a new feature. Penny stock punt of the people. I will take a punt on the most popular stock suggested at the survey link below. Only one rule. It has to be below 10 million market cap. I'll reel the stock on YouTube tomorrow. So I, I let that run for a couple of hours. And uh, the most... By far, actually. Uh, the most popular suggestion was this company, Icon Labs, down 13% today. So I bought some of that. I bought a grand's worth, okay? And uh, the rules are this. Um, I'm going to put a stop loss here in the year 20, 25%. I don't know yet. Um, so I'll only lose a quarter or fifth of my money, uh, plus, obviously, commission, a bit of spread, maybe. Um, look at the volume there. I mean, they've raised some funny, uh, some funny, maybe it is some funny, some funds, money. Um, it's not ideal, the funding there. They are like a new media agency. Uh, the guys behind Lad Bible, an amazing traction in the market, are behind this pretty much. And so it could go well. Market cap of literally 1.1 million. So it's a tiny micro cap. I'll just see how it goes. Like I say, it's a punt. I bought it. All my punts go wrong. I expect this to go wrong, but I'm going to put a stop loss in it. And uh, I don't know about the upside. If it does go up, if I make money, I don't know where to cut. Maybe I'll ask people if I should sell then. Maybe it's a, a penny stock of the people. Uh, it was WDC, so they've got some legacy issues. They have to clear some debt from that to raise some money. Some money's going towards that. And uh, it's, you know, the funding isn't ideal. You'd have some sellers in there. And it's a bit of a death spiral funding. Um, so they've got a lot of issues. But we'll see what happens. I may get tripped out straight away because I think I'm about 10% down already, 15% down. So maybe I'll put it 25%. But we'll see what happens. Okay, let's look at some charts. Okay, listen, while I think about it, what I'm going to do with my um, penny stock pun of the people, um, I'm gonna, if, I, if I do make money on that, right? <laughs> It's a punt, never makes money. If I do make money on that, I'm gonna keep going to the next one. I'm gonna put a survey again and ask people uh, for a stock. And then I'll do it for as long as I can, okay? Um, and I'll always put stop losses in. But whatever money you make on that, I will give to charity, all right? So it's not just as a, a, you know, a sort of a selfish sort of punting thing. I will give to charity and I'll also ask people what charity. So it'll be a, a, a penny stock punt of the people uh, with a charity angle, all right? So, um, so, so pump it. <laughs> no, but yeah, don't, don't pump it. But uh, all the money I earn from that will go to charity. Okay, let's look at the chart charts. This is the um, dividend paying stock I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, look at this. It's hammering, hammering. It really is. Oversold right down here. Look at this on the RSI. Doesn't happen very often. And like I said, still in a downtrend. But the one thing you have to know with dividend paying stocks, they do tend to fall less the non-dividend paying stock because of the cushion there because people start buying for the dividend because of course as the share price drops the yield goes up how does that work okay so let's say a company is a pound a share all right and they pay five pence dividend they've announced they're going to pay five pence because that's how they announce it it's penny per share pretty much so that's five pence per share all right so as the shares are at one pound that's a five percent yield now, all else being equal, let's say that there's a global growth worry going on and, and all stocks sink. Um, just to make it simple, let's say this company share price sinks from one pound to 50 pence. Right? Now, if you bought that stock right then at 50 pence, that company will still be paying as long as you're in before the X dividend date. That's a date just about a month before the, no, several days, I think a month before the payment date to that. Um, if you're in on that date, you will be getting pretty much a yield of 10% because they're still paying five pence for every share you own. So you put, you know, by one share, you'll be getting 5% on that, or 10% on that, sorry. It's gone from 5%. So the share price goes down, the yield goes up, okay? So that's why... 
when people are looking for uh, a return on their money somewhere, if if you know if bond rates are low, or gold has rallied, then they, they go look at elsewhere. If if a stock market is going down, then they look for you know dividend yielding companies. It's it's a, it's a way of earning cash and money. So. This is why I'm quite, at the moment, the net asset value of this is around about 7, uh, 7, 12, 7, 15, I think. So it does sink, of course, the share price sinks, but it's very close to net asset value. So I see this is a good deal. So look at this, it's really oversold. Seven years, historically, at the seven year low, that's where it is. And I think we at that level yet. And how far further can it go? We're at 8% at the moment. This is 50 companies that pay a dividend. So is it sustainable? Yes. They may swap a few out of companies who are having issues at the moment and uh, swap them in, but it's still a very nice return. And especially if you get capital upsides, you still have to try and buy at a decent level, you know? Because like I say, if you have lost 10% in the share price in a year and you get paid 10%, 7% uh, sort of uh, interest, you're still 3% down, pretty much, you know. So your total return, you're looking, you're looking for capital upside and a bit of dividend pay, but you don't have to, it's not all about capital upside, you know. So like I said, if you lose, you know, 5% on this company, and they pay 7% dividend a year, you still up 2%, you know, so total return is still good. Um, so that's IUKD, like I said, I put a line down there, look at this, uh, the line coming down here, and uh, it broke it here, okay. Now it's back down at the trend line, and it's also at this level. And look, doesn't happen very often. Doesn't go often go oversold. It's oversold now, so it may take a while before it, you know bounces. And like I say, it may take a while it bounces, but it's a good, probably a good chance it may bounce. And like I said, at the moment, people are worried about global growth. There's no immediate worry. You know, the economies aren't slowing down massively, but. I just think it's a good thing to be in. Okay, let's go bid stack, uh, BIDS. Uh, oh, so let's, sorry, let's look at um, agronomics first. I quite like this. Look, there's a little bit of support here now. It's hit this level of support, 8.5, um, 8.2, 8.15. It's now, it's a bit of resistance there, look, we had, and there, and it's above that. I quite like that move. And look at the RSI. It's getting towards 60. It's off 50. It's heating up. It's livening up. I quite like that. Uh, let's go to bid stack. By the way, it's a good article. I tweeted out on this earlier on. Um, uh, let's check it out. On, on, it's, it's like fish is the next big sort of uh, area for investors. Let's get my head out of the way uh, as far as you know, replacement or cultured meat is concerned. Um, bids is testing that support look. It was there before at 27. It was been there before 27. It's there again, right on 27. RSI's cool off. Look at that. It hasn't been down this level since, uh, when was that? January. January is last at this level, pretty much. Waiting for news. James, hopefully, coming on the podcast very soon. He's just got in from China. I did communicate with him. He said he was um, a bit jet lagged. So hopefully, he's coming on the podcast very soon. Um, what's next in order? Uh, Icon. Icon, there's no, is, is very little, um, uh, there's very little. There we are. Whoosh! Wow, that is down at uh, 17 on the RSI. I'm hoping for a bounce there. <laughs> okay, very little um, detail on the chart. Emotion, you're right. Someone asked me this week, so why is the directors revealing TR1s and their holdings have gone down? Percentage holders have gone down. Actual shares they hold has gone up. So more shares have been issued, of course, because of the placing. The guys bought in the market after the placing, but you know uh, what they raised two million, so it's that ten percent more shares in issue. They've increased their holdings, but because the overall amount of shares have increased, the actual percentage has gone down. But they've still you know, bought, put more money into the company. If you see what I mean, so they've been diluted. That's a bit, but they've still added to their holding. So look, we're on a nice support here. Uh, this is six point seven. We are again. This is you know it's cooling off here. We need to, to warm up. I'm sure there's been lots of news coming out. I, I, I like this business. I said it's the start of the week last week because the guys honestly believe the business is getting better. They know they bought more stock. They already hold stock and they've added another 190 grand, the directors. So I'm confident uh, that they like the company. Okay, Skin. Again, it's uh, Skin is sold off again as well. We'll be up with Skin and take him in. Do that. Bounced off uh, pretty much uh, you know, over sole level. 
bounced off this support here. Where's the, where's the support here? See a bit of support there? Bounced off that. Hopefully it'll build a little bit now. A bit of news we could do with. But in this market, it's hard work, even if you put news out. You know, it's um, it's uh, it goes nowhere because the general sentiment is down. Uh, I like this massive rally today of support, which is quite nice to see. Look at that. Look at that. It didn't like going below the support level. Support level here, look, it tried several times to get over this 6.78 area, and then it popped above that. Uh, and then this is oversold, look. But it came down. Look at this oversold level. It, that's down trend channel. Didn't get about it. Broke above it today. Went from, what, 28 uh, up to 41. It did come, it come back a little bit. But it did go to 41. So it's warming up. I quite like that. It did go to 50 odd today. But it's, oh, that's because it went all the way up there. Look at that. So it's come back a bit. But I think we've seen the bottom here. And we may trade in the range for a while before we see any news. If news comes out, it'll push higher, hopefully. But I think we've seen the bottom of the range here. I've topped up a couple of times here in this company. So I wasn't fully exposed when it sort of started going nuts up here. Uh, but like I said, this divergence. Share price here um, made another high here, but the relative strength didn't. That shows momentum was waning as the share price. Negative divergence is called. While the share price was climbing, the strength is getting weaker. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, open Orphan. Again, very little. Um, did you check out the video by Carhill? Worth checking out on Vox. Uh, check out the video on Carhill. Very like, look at that. It's pretty oversold. It's rallied a little bit today. But I, I, high hopes for this company. I really like them. I really do like them. Um, Polarian, again, a bit of a sell off, which is a bit silly, but they've risen quickly. But massive milestone coming up. I think this milestone will blow the doors off, the roof off, uh, if they pass. And there's a good chance they will pass the clinical phase three trials. I think it'll blow the roof off. But um, let's see, maybe we'll have a bit of support here. Who knows? Let's see who the support is. It's cooling down a bit, RSI. Uh, safe stay, a powerhouse. The yeah, powerhouse hasn't done anything really else. Uh, safe stay. Uh, again, coming down to these old levels, it's genuine. I see it undervalued. Undervalued. Really are. Down to oversold. Down to 30. And they're oversold. Uh, way hey, education. Uh, we... Yeah, on the 200 day moving average. Like that. Even this oversold again. All these companies are oversold. It's not a bad thing because, I mean, they may go up. I didn't understand this today. There's a massive spread on on on. on uh, I said went up here, came back down. I didn't understand it on zero. So massive spread on this. I went for I, I, this is the kind of company zero can reveal news that'll blow the doors off. I honestly believe that. But uh, in the meantime, it's a managed company. CEO is a manager, high paid manager, very little skin in the game. I'm looking for. I just love the tech. I think and I think like I, said, I mentioned before several times. So that's it in the charts. Okay, time to look at the performance of the companies as I've covered them in my videos. Uh, so Bidstack is, is down at 20, is it 26 pence? Maybe 27 pence, I don't, I don't know. But still through 9%. Uh, I sold Big Dish. It's taking a good, good job there, it's taking a hammer in. Uh, new Formix down at 138%. Uh, percent. Uh, rally today, didn't it? See the chart, as I showed you in the chart. Uh, Polarian, 23%. Agronox, 19%. Rally today as well. Uh, Integument, 17%. Open Orphan, 4.8%. Way, 1.7%. And I'm down in powerhouse, uh, 3.5, safe say 12 or 13. Uh, emotion down 13. And Zeros, I didn't need one then, honestly, down at 25%. I thought that rallied today. It's very massive spread on Zeros. It's very odd. And here's my performance. It's getting worse as the market sells off. Last three months, 82%. Uh, last six months, 77%. Um, last 12 months, 108%, and last 15 months, or 18 months, sorry, 153%. That's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, you can see, uh, if you click on my head right there, right there, you can see, uh, subscribe, hit the bell, don't forget the bell, and uh, there's some other videos you can watch there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.